Okay, the next section is magnetism. And hopefully you've noticed as we drew at least a couple of these, that sometimes electrons are paired and sometimes they're unpaired. There's usually at least one unpaired, uh, but sometimes there can be no unpaired electrons. And so because there's paired and unpaired electrons, we have magnetism. Uh, so you want to remember the definition. If it's paramagnetic, that means there's unpaired electrons. If it's paradiamagnetic, that means there's paired electrons. So this one, the paramagnetic, that's the one that actually has a magnetic moment or is magnetic. Response to a magnetic field. So we're often going to tell you, oh, we have a magnetic complex. Uh, draw the CFT and you'll know that uh, you need to end up with, uh, if it's paramagnetic, with unpaired electrons. So you are going to expect uh, this kind of thing. If it's strong field, uh, which means low spin, that it'll tend to be diamagnetic or more so, less paramagnetic, if you want. It's sort of a continuum. If it's weak field or high spin, you'll expect a highly or relatively high paramagnetic substance. Um, because weak field or high spin tends to have more unpaired electrons. How do you tell if it's strong or weak field? That's from the ligands from the spectrochemical series. So that's how you figure it out unless we tell you straight up. So let's do a little tiny uh, example. Uh, And y'all want to see if you can name these things. This is uh, hexacarbonyl ruthenium one ion. Hexacarbonyl ruthenium one ion. Okay. So because carbonyl is neutral, ruthenium has a plus one charge. Ruthenium is in the eighth column of the per uh, periodic table. So you can check that out if you have a periodic table. It's in the eighth column and it's plus one. There are seven electrons total. Because there are seven electrons, I'll just want to remind myself of that, so it's D7. I'm going to now draw the CFT diagram and see if this is paramagnetic or diamagnetic or what the heck it is. So let's draw that out. Uh, it's octahedral, so I'm going to draw the octahedral picture. So there's three on the bottom, two on top. This is the DXY, the DYZ, the, DZ, uh, the DXZ, and we've got the DX squared minus Y squared, and the DZ squared. Let me zoom in on this one here. Okay, now let's fill in those seven electrons. Here's delta. Oh, first, before I do the seven electrons, I need to know if this is uh, strong field or weak field. So let me get out my spectrochemical series. Carbonyl is a strong field ligand. In fact, it's one of the strongest. Because it's one of the strongest, uh, that means delta is really large. So delta is large. Let's uh, remember that. Okay. So we've got one, two, three. Delta is large, so I'm going to continue on the lower level. Four, five, six, and now I'll finally go up to the upper level. Seven. So we want to see the magnetism. This is slightly paramagnetic. It has one unpaired electron. So we would say, oh, it's slightly paramagnetic. The more unpaired electrons it has, the more paramagnetic. 